So there's this bureaucracy in Ottawa, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, that recently sent a directive to the Liquor Control Board of Ontario demanding the removal of a pair of wines. Gee, why would that be? Was the vino contaminated? Were there perhaps fragments of glass in the bottles? Nope, the wines were ordered off the shelves for political reasons. You see, the two wines in question are from Israel, and the CFIA, or more accurately, a junior bureaucrat at the CFIA, had a problem with that. So it was that the CFIA notified the LCBO that it was unacceptable to declare Israel as the country of origin for the two wines in question because the wines are not produced within Israel's formal borders. Therefore, product of Israel on the labels would be misleading, meaning the wines could not be sold in Canada. Vince Caron, a senior policy analyst for the LCBO, looked at the bizarre memo and made the case that politics should be left out of product selection as they went to bat for the Israeli wineries. Um, no, Karan didn't do that. Instead, he issued a memo noting the LCBO would comply with the CFIA edict. And here's what Mr. Coward, or I mean Mr. Karan, said to wine vendors in his memo, quote, The CFIA clarified that product of Israel would not be an acceptable country of origin declaration for wine products that have been made of grapes that are grown, fermented, processed, blended, and finished in the West Bank occupied territory. CFIA further advised that the Government of Canada does not recognize Israel's sovereignty over the territories occupied in 1967, the Golan Heights, the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip. As such, wine products from these regions that are labeled product of Israel would not be acceptable and would be misleading as per subsection 5.1 of the Food and Drugs Act, end quote. So, a product from Israel can't be labeled as product of Israel because of political as opposed to geographical issues surrounding Israel? How should the wineries label their vintages as product of the wonderful land of Oz? There was much furor over the dumbass directive, but within a few days the CFIA was rescinding its Israeli wine purge, according to B'nai B'rith. Apparently, a low-level person at the CFIA made this decision without actually seeking authority from the government. Regardless, the CFIA now correctly states that these wines adhere to the free trade agreement and the products from those two wineries can indeed be sold as currently labeled. Still, I wanted to get an idea how this fiasco got into gear in the first place. A last CFIA spokeswoman, Anna Matos, is hunkered down in her Ottawa bunker and isn't returning calls. Too bad because I wanted to know why this anonymous CFIA bureaucrat was embracing an anti-Israel mandate championed by the nuts behind the boycott divestment sanction movement. I also wanted the CFIA to confirm or deny the rumor that this junior bureaucrat at the me- is a member of the Green Party. Guess we'll never know, folks. Yet, if the CFIA is going to play politics with product of origin rules, this bureaucracy will very quickly discover the definition of slippery slope. For example, check out this beer found on LCBO shelves. It's called Tusker. Tusker is product of Kenya. Kenya is an enlightened nation that allows thousands of girls to be mutilated on an annual basis via female genital circumcision. But hey, neither the CFIA nor the LCBO have a problem with Tusker beer, which is described as a medium golden amber featuring a light multi-aroma with citrusy hops. Mmm, sounds like a delightful beverage to imbibe in as a Kenyan girl has her clitoris removed with a broken beer bottle. And hey, what of the wines from Ontario and BC? Should Canada's domestic wines be yanked from liquor store shelves until we get all those messy native land claims settled? If not, why not? I also reached out to the LCBO for comment regarding why they were so gung-ho to remove the Israeli wine, but their explanation for going ahead with this mandate essentially boils down to this. The anti-Israel strategy was a CFIA directive and the LCBO was (laughs) just following orders. Yeah, just following orders. Golly, where have we heard that line before? For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Like what you just saw? Then click subscribe below and never miss another Rebel video.